Episode 24, This is Defying the Natural Order. Encounter with the Ex-Boyfriend. The shoot began. On both sides of the street, there were vendors selling lanterns and riddles, and people in the crowd held lanterns, creating a lively atmosphere. Meng Changa forcibly pulled Sun Huanqing out of the clinic, where he had been bored. The camera followed the two, capturing scenes of the young couple running through the brightly lit Chang'an street, creating a beautiful and romantic atmosphere. This scene had few lines, the focus was on the setting and the changes in the main character's expressions. Meng Chang'e was full of enthusiasm, and Sun Huanqing, initially reluctant, was gradually influenced by the girl's warmth. They moved through the crowd together. After walking for a while, Sun Huanqing suddenly realized that the girl was still holding his hand, so he quickly struggled to free himself. However, Meng Chang'e stubbornly held on, with an expression that said, This hand belongs to me. Sun Huanqing became anxious. Miss Meng, please restrain yourself. Men and women should not be too intimate. Meng Chang'e furrowed her brow and glared at him. You bookworm. What if I let go of your hand, and we get separated? If we get separated, then so be it. Sun Huanqing, extremely embarrassed, blurted out without thinking. Mr. Sun Huanqing. You? Meng Chang'e was furious and shook off his hand, disappearing into the crowd. Watching her disappear into the sea of people, Sun Huanqing's expression became increasingly anxious. With the recent rumors of flower thieves in the city and several girls already missing, in the chaotic streets today, if anything happened to her, what would he do? At this moment, Sun Huanqing was only worried about Meng Chang'e and completely forgot that she was a mischievous little demon. Even if they encountered a flower thief, it would be their bad luck. The camera followed Sun Huanqing as he anxiously searched for Meng Chang'e in the crowd. When Meng Chang'e was about to collapse from the search, someone suddenly tapped his shoulder. Turning around, he saw a person wearing a ghost face mask standing in front of him, speaking with a somewhat proud tone, Dr. Sun, were you looking for me? Hearing the familiar voice, Sun Huanqing's joy at finding her again made him hug her tightly. Meng Chang'e, clearly not expecting such a bold move from the usually reserved Sun Huanqing, froze on the spot. Next, they would act out the scene where Meng Chang'e takes the initiative to kiss Sun Huanqing. Fans who were eagerly watching held their breath, not daring to make a sound. This first kiss between the two was anticipated to be extraordinarily beautiful. At the same time, there was someone in a black car who was even more breathless, Landy Jingli. Landy Jingli curled up by the window, trying to stay as far away from his brother as possible. He even closed his eyes, not daring to look. He absolutely did not believe that his brother would just watch and do nothing. The temperature inside the car was almost freezing after seeing Ning Shi holding Jiang Mai's hand and their embrace. If they truly kissed, what would happen? Would there be a bloody scene later? Landy Jingli couldn't figure out how his brother would stop this scene without offending Ning Shi. Carefully peeking through his fingers at the screen, Landy Jingli saw Ning Shi slowly remove her mask. Then, she gazed affectionately at Jiang Mai before reaching out and pulling him closer by his neck. It's over, it's over, it's over. Someone's going to die. While Landy Jingli was lamenting in his heart, he suddenly saw the lanterns around them, one by one, extinguishing. The effect was as if the deathly aura emanating from his brother had extinguished them, eliminating the horror. Ah! It's raining! A cry of surprise echoed through the crowd. Because the lanterns were made of paper, and some lotus lanterns had no cover, they were instantly extinguished by the rain. On the other side, Ning Shi, who was about to kiss Jiang Mai, stopped abruptly due to this unexpected change. She instinctively covered her head with her hand. Why is it raining? Ouch, it hurts. It seems like there's even hail. Jiang Mai, who was nervously on the verge of passing out from the abrupt break, exclaimed, What the hell? Weren't we in a drought recently? It hasn't rained for months. And it's so hot, why is it hailing? Landy Jingli in the car was utterly bewildered. It's raining? How did it suddenly rain? Wait a minute. Listening to the banging sound on the roof, it seems like it's even hail. At this moment, a flash of insight crossed Landy Jingli's mind, and he stared at his brother, who remained unmoved like a mountain, with extreme speechlessness. You've even resorted to artificial rain. Brother, are you trying to defy the natural order? Also, did you use too much force? It's even hailing. Seeing the sudden interruption of the shoot, Landy Jingli was confused. Drive, Landy Jingli ordered. Yes, young master. 
The driver started the engine, and the dark-colored car silently left the set. Guo Qixing didn't expect the situation to turn out like this. He lamented on the spot. If the shoot had continued just now, it would have been a very perfect scene. Ah, uh, forget it, forget it. Things don't always go as planned. Let's call it a day today. But everyone, don't leave yet. Let's have dinner together tonight. We couldn't properly welcome Mai, so we must make up for it. Guo Qixing invited everyone. With the recent twists and turns in the crew, this gathering was also a way to strengthen the team's bond. The staff, who were initially disheartened by the sudden weather change, suddenly became spirited again, cheering. Jiang Mai responded half-heartedly, clearly not in a good mood. Ning Shi tossed a towel to him. What's with that expression? Disappointed I didn't kiss you forcibly enough? Nonsense. I'm just unhappy about having to act with you again. Jiang Mai glared at her, then warned with a stern expression, You won't have some other plans tonight, right? No way. What could I have? Ning Shi said while casually sending a message to Lu Tingxiao as usual. Jiang Wei sneakily glanced at her phone, wondering what she was texting. Then he noticed something unusual. Ning Shi, did you change your WeChat nickname? Uh, because of Lu Tingxiao. Ning Shi replied. Jiang Wei's pupils suddenly contracted. Did Lu Tingxiao ask you to change it? If he asked you to change it, then change it. You used that nickname for so many years. Even when I mocked you back then, you didn't bother to change it. Now he asked you to change it, and you changed it. Ning Shi rolled her eyes at him. Can you stop getting so excited? He didn't ask me to change it, okay? Then why did you change it? Jiang Mai questioned. Because he didn't ask me to change it, and he even said my nickname was pretty good. He mentioned that he wanted me to help him think of a similar one. Ning Shi explained. Jiang Mai's eyes suddenly widened. Did Lu Tingxiao let you help him think of a nickname? He actually allowed it? Isn't that the name you've been using for so many years? Back then, when I said you should change it, you didn't care. Now he wants you to change it, and you changed it. Ning Shi didn't feel like typing, so she sent a voice message directly to Lu Tingxiao. Mr. Lu, there's a gathering with the crew tonight. Please tell Little Treasure not to wait for me for dinner. Soon, there was a buzzing sound, and Lu Tingxiao's reply came in the form of another voice message. His voice was unique, cold yet filled with concern. All right, have fun. Ning Xiao Xiao. Jiang Mai called her name ominously from the side. What's up? Ning Shi asked. Have you not only lost your sight but also your hearing? Don't you think my uncle's tone is off when talking to you? Jiang Mai questioned. Jiang Mai, are you feeling itchy again? Ning Shi retorted. Jiang Mai decisively chose not to say anything. Hehe, <laughs> Ning Shi, wait for it. By tonight at the latest, I will find evidence that will make you admit defeat. Admit defeat in heart and words. Mingzhu Grand Hotel. This time, almost everyone from the crew gathered for dinner, including Ning Shuelawad and others who didn't have scenes today. Everyone warmly welcomed Jiang Mai, and the atmosphere in the private room was lively. After three rounds of drinks, Amy suddenly stood up with a cup of wine. Ning Shi, I misunderstood you before. I offer you this cup as an apology and a thank you. Amy, you're too polite. Ning Shi down the drink in one go. Cheers erupted from the crowd, and many people came to toast Ning Shi. She accepted all the toasts, using alcohol to resolve grievances. Watching Ning Shi getting along with the crew, she smiled with satisfaction. I said my junior sister couldn't be that kind of person. As the dinner was coming to an end, a tall figure suddenly knocked on the door and walked in. Oh, Xu Xiao. Su Xiao is here. Brother Yan, why are you here? Seeing the arrival, Ning Shuelua immediately greeted him with excitement. In the corner, the drunk Jiang Mai instantly sobered up, staring at the man who walked in wearing a clean white suit with an elegant temperament. Su Yan. He was Su Yan? The only man Ning Shi had ever loved? Su Yan, the top boyfriend in the rankings, always appeared when Ning Shuelua needed him to show up. At this moment, he was being accompanied by Ning Shuelua, with her holding onto his arm and looking gentle. This time, the intoxicated Jiang Mai instantly sobered up. His gaze was sharp as he stared at the man in a pure white suit who walked in. Su Yan. Was he Su Yan? The only man Ning Shi had ever truly loved? Su Yan, the legendary top boyfriend, always appeared whenever Ning Shuelua needed someone to back her up. At this moment, he was accompanied by Ning Shuelua, who held his arm gently and greeted everyone with a warm smile. I made a reservation here with a friend. 
I heard from Shuelawa that you guys are here too. Feel free to order whatever you like. This meal is on me. The crowd cheered. Wow. Su Xiao is so generous. I feel like every time we benefit from Teacher Ning's blessings. Then we won't be polite. At this moment, a cold snort came from the corner. Why should I let you pay for my welcoming banquet? I'll pay for it. Perhaps because of the tension between the ex-boyfriends, Jiang Mai did not hide his hostility towards Su Yan. Men are always sensitive to the hostility of other men. Su Yan immediately sensed Jiang Mai's unfriendly attitude towards him. However, he still wore a gentle smile on his face and calmly said, since it's a welcoming banquet for Mr. Jiang, it should be paid for by Mr. Jiang himself, both morally and reasonably. Yes, this meal should be on us to show some hospitality. Ning Shuelua chimed in. What hospitality? I'm a native of the imperial capital. I don't need you to show any hospitality. Jiang Mai, fueled by the alcohol, was about to erupt. However, Ning Shi, who was standing beside him, secretly pressed his shoulder from behind and whispered in his ear, Are you an idiot? Why not use a sucker like him? Let him pay. Jiang Mai's face turned even worse when he heard this. Humph, are you sure you're not speaking up for him? He's your ex-boyfriend. Ning Shi raised an eyebrow. Aren't you my ex-boyfriend too? Ning Xiao Xiao. Don't change the topic on me. Jiang Mai's heartache intensified. What did he mean to Ning Shi, as an old lover? How could he compare to Su Yan, whom she had known since childhood, even calling out his name in her dreams? Ning Shi sighed, okay, okay, I won't change the topic. Do you really want me to expose our relationship and everything between you, me, and Su Yan in front of everyone? When would this guy ever be more stable? Finally, Jiang Mai fell silent. You can pay if you want. In the end, Jiang Mai casually said, Watching Ning Shi whispering to Jiang Mai just now, Su Yan frowned imperceptibly. Was it an illusion? He felt like Ning Shi's relationship with Jiang Mai wasn't just that of colleagues. Seeing Su Yan absentmindedly looking in Ning Shi's direction, Ning Shuelua shook his arm to bring his attention back. She said sweetly, Brother Yan, did you bring the things I asked you to bring? Su Yan returned to his senses. I brought them. He handed her a stack of invitations and said to everyone, Tomorrow is Shuelua's birthday. I hope everyone can come to the birthday banquet tomorrow night. Ah. Tomorrow is Teacher Ning's birthday. We must go. Teacher Ning's birthday banquet must be grand. Let's all go and broaden our horizons. Ning Shuelua smiled sweetly, distributing invitations to everyone one by one. When it came to Ning Shi, she specially reminded her, little junior sister, you must come. Ning Shi rotated her wine glass absentmindedly, staring at the red invitation without much expression. When it reached Jiang Mai, he didn't move. No need to give me one, I'm not going. Hearing this, Ning Shuelua's expression froze for a moment, but she quickly regained her composure. She asked with concern, Mai, do you have something tomorrow? Can you change your schedule? I really hope you can come. Please, pretty please. She had promised several friends who liked Jiang Mai that she would invite him. Being requested by a beautiful woman in such a manner, almost any man would find it hard to resist. However, Jiang Mai completely ignored her charms, and there was even a trace of disdain in his eyes. Annoyed, he said impatiently, can't change it. Tomorrow is also my friend's birthday. After saying that, he glanced in Ning Shi's direction. Ning Shi sipped her wine, remaining silent. Ah, what a coincidence. Your friend also shares the same birthday as me. It must be someone important to you, right? That's a pity. If your friend finishes earlier, feel free to join us. Our party will go all night. Ning Shuelua said with an understanding tone. Damn it, unable to invite Jiang Mai, wouldn't that make her lose face in front of so many sisters? Jiang Mai, who couldn't invite, was probably someone very important since he could decline her invitation in front of so many people. Wait a minute, it's also their birthday tomorrow. Ning Shuelua looked at Ning Shi with suspicion. She suddenly remembered something. Later, Wang Tai announced that the additional investment came from Lu Jingli, and her father told her that he secretly designated Ning Shi as the female lead with the director. Why would the prosperous Lu Jingli specify Ning Shi as the female lead? If her guess was correct, and Ning Shi and Jiang Mai had a deep relationship, then Jiang Mai must have helped Ning Shi. If that were the case, everything would make sense. Did Ning Shi seduce Jiang Mai? After Su Yan left, Jiang Mai continued to look at Ning Shi disdainfully. Is that guy the true love who made you love him to death back then? 
Your judgment in men is really questionable. Ning Shi leisurely glanced at him. I think your judgment is the one that's questionable. Cien, a man like him, if I were to give him a score out of 10, he would at least get 9 points, okay? Cien exploded when he heard this. What the fuck? Why only 9 points? He can't even get that many. Ning Shi had a matter-of-fact tone. Because he's a man I love to death. If I say he's bad, won't that be slapping myself in the face? Besides, from an objective perspective, he's really worth 9 points. Su Yan's appearance was not as dazzling as Jiang Mai's. His eyes couldn't shine as bright, but he had an elegant temperament, a gentle type. In a fairy tale world, he would be a prince, in ancient times, a refined young master. Hmm, a mysterious young man with jade-like features. Anyway, he was my favorite type during my teenage years, the kind that could make you fall for him at first sight. Hearing Ning Shi talk about Su Yan like this, Jiang Mai's chest burned even more intensely. Damn it, Ning Xiao Shi, are you not over him? Look at how highly you praise him. Ning Shi rolled her eyes. I really don't care anymore, so I can talk about him calmly. What's your IQ, anyway? Moreover, what she described was the vivid, beautiful youth in her memory, not the current Su Yan. Jiang Mai took a while to calm his anger. He asked in a mellow voice, then, what score would you give me? Ning Shi touched her chin and answered, 9.9. .9. Just your face alone is worth that much. Hearing this, Jiang Mai's anger subsided quite a bit. He touched his own face, revealing a somewhat pleased expression. Of course. Brother relies on his face for a living, you know? But where does the remaining 0.1 point get deducted? Ning Shi looked at him with a gaze like she was looking at an idiot. Do you still need to ask? Obviously, it's deducted from your IQ. Forget it, let's not argue with this brat, especially since she gave me such a high score. Jiang Mai's eyes flickered, and he couldn't help but ask again, what about Lu Tingxiao? What score would you give him? What kind of man is he in your eyes? Uh, Lu Tingxiao. This question was a bit difficult for Ning Shi to answer. After considering for a long time, she replied, I dare not give a score to the big devil. If I were to describe his type in one sentence, it would be the kind you can admire from afar but can't play with. The sea surface seems calm, but you never know what terrifying undercurrents are hidden beneath. This kind of man is unfathomable. If you recklessly get too deep, you might end up buried at the bottom of the sea. Jiang Mai's complexion improved a lot after hearing this. Humph, I guess you still have some rationality left. But, Ning Shi hesitated. But what? Jiang Mai asked nervously. Ning Shi propped her chin, smiling. But, under the peony flowers, one dies like a gentleman. Damn it, Ning Xiao Shi. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Don't be so agitated. Jiang Mai was almost driven to madness. I think you're speaking the truth after getting drunk. I initially suspected that you had some ulterior motives towards Lu Tingxiao. Are you trying to seduce him?